Welcome back to our workshop. Today I'm working on this drop leaf table that has a side support and unfortunately the side support has broken off. The challenge with this is how do you clamp something that's got a curved edge like that? Stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I'm going to start by turning this upside down. Oh, and there's a logo over here. Let's take a look. I like looking at the history pieces. Uh, Villas Canada, I'm not familiar with that name. There's a stamp here, and this is burned in. That logo style looks like something maybe from the 70s or 80s. And we've got Robertson screws here, so this isn't an antique. Uh, but let me look up Villas Canada and see what I can find out. It's pretty easy these days to find information on old furniture companies. This company ran from the late 1800s to 1995, based out of Cowansville, Quebec. This piece, as I said, isn't that old, so we'll get to repairing it, but I did find a really cool ad for a piece of furniture that has a similar configuration to this, not this exact same table, from 1959. Take a look. To glue this piece on here, I need to figure out a clamping system to deal with this curve. I also need to check that my clamps will fit in here. So I'll pull one off the rack, see if it fits in, and it doesn't. So I can clamp here, but not down here. So I'll have to take the tabletop off. With the base loose, I should be able to tilt this up and pull this out. There we go. Hmm, just two metal pins holding it together. I'll push this to the side here and then take a closer look at why this joint failed. If I put this in front of a video camera light, what I'm looking for is a sheen. Something that indicates glue on here, but I'm not seeing anything. It's a nice tight fitting joint. So my guess is this failed just from lack of glue. So I don't really need to do anything with that. I'll sand it just a little bit. I don't want to mess up the joint there, but just a little bit to make sure if there is any residue, it comes off and that can be glued together. To clamp this up, what I'm gonna do is dry fit it. So you never wanna do this with glue on it. You wanna practice without any glue. So I just wanna see here, if I clamp this, what happens? Okay, and this opens up here just because of the pressure on these parts. So if I were to take that pressure off a bit, What would happen if I clamped across here? You see how this wants to slide? And this is dry wood. As soon as you put glue on that, it's really going to want to slide. So the way to solve this is with something called vector clamping. Vector clamping is the principle that in order for this to be clamped properly, pressure needs to be provided in a straight line perpendicular to that. So I need my clamps working like this, here and here. And the way to do that is to make something square here. So I've got two square surfaces I can clamp. I've got a scrap of plywood here and I'm gonna use this for the vector clamping. What I wanna do is cut out a piece of the plywood that will support all of this. Now the key is to make sure that this is parallel to this. So let me just measure it up here. Eight inches. Needs to go that way a bit. And then what I'm going to do is trace around here. So 
what I'm going to do is cut this section out and leave this section. This is what I'm going to clamp with. So with this piece cut out, I can nest it around here, hold this in place, and let's give it a test. Put a clamp on, give it a squeeze. This is where the seam is, and the vector clamping is providing pressure this way. And because the pressure from clamps radiates at a 45 degree angle, this clamp is providing pressure well beyond this break point here and well beyond this break point down here. So I only need one clamp to hold all this together. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube this is a quality video and they'll share it with more people. So I've just got a small block here. I'm wrapping it in 120 paper and I'm using a small block on purpose because I want to make sure I stay very much aligned with these pieces. I don't want to be rolling back and forth on them. So I'm just going to carefully sand a little bit here and see if there's any adhesive that's coming off. It looks like sawdust. The worst thing I could do at this point is sand this and change the profile of it and that way I wouldn't have a nice tight joint. So I'll do the same on this, and we'll be ready for glue. I start by putting a clear report cover underneath this. It just provides a surface that it's not going to stick to the padding. And then we'll get out the glue. So I suspect the problem before was there wasn't enough glue applied on this. And what you're looking for is enough glue on the joint that you're going to get some squeeze out. Some people think they should avoid the mess. You need a little bit of a mess. Make sure you got enough glue. Glue needs to be applied to both sides. And I spread it with an artist brush. That way I get good glue coverage on every part of the surface. Clean that off at a time. Now, I can't feel this part of the joint here when I clamp it up, so I'm going to be relying on the top surface here to align the parts. Didn't work, did it? <laughs> okay, so might need to move the clamp down a bit. Yeah, that's it. Let's just get the clamp in the right spot so it's not going to move. So I did cover off that I've got enough degrees here of angle to cover off the clamping pressure on that, but quick grip clamps don't have a tremendous amount of pressure, and pressure is one of the key ingredients in making a good strong glue joint. So I'm just going to add a couple more clamps, I've got space to do it, just for some extra insurance. Well the glue's drying, I've got a bit of work to do here, listen to this sound. If you caught it on the intro, these pegs here are turning in the wood and causing some squeaking. So a little bit of wax, we'll fix that. In Canada, we're a bilingual country, so we have English labels and French labels. So let me pull up my wax here, and we'll get this worked up. Okay. 
take off my mic and we'll test it out. Nope, I need some more on the end. There we go. This side is probably the same. Yeah, so I'll take this apart and wax it up and then come back when the glue is dried. The glue is all dried so I can unclamp this. Let's put it together and see how it works. Okay, I've got this gooped up pin in there. Okay, put the screws in and we'll be good to go. I tighten the screws by hand, that way I know I'm not over tightening them with the impact driver. So we got rid of the squeak. And there's just one last thing here. This is where the piece fell off onto the floor. It damaged a little bit. So I just use a touch-up marker for that. Now, I've got an upcoming video on touch-up markers. And I bought a few that I haven't used before. So I'm going to use my favorite here. But stay tuned for a video on this so you can learn about stain touch-up markers. So there's the touch-up. Luckily no one's ever going to see this because it's at the bottom of the table, but it makes me feel better knowing it's a quality job. Educational videos like this are brought to you in part by our Patreons. Their names are over here, and I'd like to thank our Patreons. If you'd like to join them and have your name up here, you can check out the link in the video description below. So this table is now set to go back to the customer. It's all back in working order. And that's thanks to a call and vector clamping. If you haven't subscribed yet, click over here and click on the bell icon and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>